volunteer with Horizons for 21 years. So, uh, I'm, a, I'm a newcomer here. <laughs> and the last couple of years I've been a, a board, uh, the, the, the chairman of the volunteer board, so that's what I'm doing here. And I'm glad to welcome all of you because we have an amazing uh, opportunity, amazing challenge for us. And, and if I could begin perhaps just by introducing a couple of our uh, special dignitaries. First, Kim Rudd, could you stand up for us, Kim, our, our federal member of Parliament? Yes, Mr. Lou Rinaldi, our provincial member of Parliament. Yes. And Gail Brokenier, our town uh, mm -hmm. Welcome to all of you. Um, this is a huge project and it's complicated. Lots of different facets that are all interrelated things. So we're going to go in layers to see if we can get a good understanding of it because we want you to get lots of information. It's a four year project. The total cost is $13.2 million. Uh, some of it, most of it, is, is, has, is channels through us to our partners through the federal government, Global Affairs Canada. And it, uh, it involves Guatemala. So, where is Guatemala? Guatemala is in Central America, and it's hard to keep these places apart, eh? I've been there lots of times, you have to watch and see. But my personal theory is that's why they have so many revolutions. I thought you were over here. No, I was over You were over here last time. Anyway, here's, this is Mexico. So just there's the Yucatan where we all go to Cancun. Guatemala is just beneath it. Belize is on the right-hand side. Beneath it here is Honduras. And we're working in the western part of Guatemala. You see there it's in the highlands. Uh, an area of Guatemala has 15 million people in it, and half of them are indigenous, Mayan and Kichi, a different sort of group of that, and half of the population of Guatemala lives in poverty. 13% of, of Guatemala as a country they live in extreme poverty. So um, that's the setup. Our project is really to, to um, reduce child and maternal mortality. So, so this is pregnant women. I'm delivering infants up to five years of age, and to improve the health of both of them, um, and, and to increase uh, service to that group of people in this uh, mountainous area of Guatemala. So uh, the whole the whole project is designed to foster their their own ownership of this problem and the, and the solutions for it. So it uh, a lot of this is all I think all of this is in the information. We're, we're talking about influencing about 220,000 Guatemalans over the four-year course. Of women, children, newborns, and of course men that are very important in the whole dynamic. Something like 27,000 uh, pregnant women. So it's a, you see it's a huge business here. So um, that's just a quick overview. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to start with, with what's there now. Um, Midwives uh, offer a lot of prenatal care and birthing care now, and we're going to train, in, increase the training of midwives. We're going to start with 50 midwives, take an intensive course, and those 50 teach other midwives. So eventually we'll have a thousand midwives in the area up to date on prenatal care, warning signs for pregnancy, uh, organization for how to deal with problems, uh, equipped for delivery. And, and we're not talking about uh, CT scans here. We're talking about equipment for delivery like gloves, mm -hmm. soap, uh, waterproof, uh, surgical gowns, so that you have goggles, so that you don't get uh, fluids on yourself, headlamps, so that we start. So that's the kind of thing I'm talking about uh, teaching midwives up to date. Um, uh, World Health Organization supported uh, ways of safe delivery in small communities resuscitation of newborns. We're talking about an aim of having pregnant women being seen at least four times throughout the course of their uh, 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 pregnancy before they deliver. We're talking about uh, infants being resuscitated properly. We're talking about uh, um, full breastfeeding as the best nutrition for newborns. We're talking about supplementation of uh, infants after that period of time because many children are uh, malnourished. If you're malnourished as a child, not only are you small and you're thin, but you don't, you don't, you can't possibly reach your potential as a person. You can't possibly get the maximum brain development. So part of this project is uh, uh, try trying to uh, ad address that as well. We're also talking about um, full immunization, family planning, and, and very important, and um, 
and the, the federal government has emphasized this, and that is that it's adequate record keeping. Because if you, if you don't know the adequate records of who's pregnant, who have the number of stillbirths, the problems that you've had, you can't possibly solve a problem if you can't identify it. So, so that's what we're going to do. And we're, we're doing this it's in a very culturally sensitive way because this population is indigenous. They're Kicha, the Mayans, uh, the, sorry, the, the women, the midwives, many of them are illiterate. So we have to teach in the pictorial way. Uh, but in, in that sense, we'll be able to reach the population that we that is in need. So um, there are lots and lots of statistics there. Well, I just want to give you two. One is in, in this area uh, of um, Guatemala, about 69% of the deliveries, there is someone at the delivery who is a skilled attendant, usually a midwife, somebody's going to help you. It's great. But it means that in 31% of the cases, there's nobody there, nobody who's skilled anyway. So. And, and again, it's, uh, we're not talking about uh, you know, an apartment at Young and Brewer here. We're talking about a, a small village. Maybe it's rainy, maybe it's dark, maybe there's no electricity, there's no running water. But certainly, there's, you'll have trouble transporting if there's a difficulty. So 31% of those deliveries are not attended, and, and that's one of the things we're trying to That's a statistic that sticks in my mind. Can you imagine? Uh, so. The other statistic that sticks in my mind is the thing called maternal mortality. Maternal mortality is a little frightening, but maternal mortality is just what it says. It's, it's the number of women who die in pregnancy or delivery. And, the time of the and yeah, it, I mean, it, it, it happens in Canada. It even happens in Canada. I hate to I touch something here. It happens in Canada. It, it's, uh, it, the number is eight women per 100,000 births. So, and it's, you it, 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 it imagine it's just uh, uh, absolutely unbelievable. But it's, it's too shocking. But it does happen. In this, in, in Guatemala, in the indigenous population, the whole of the country, the number is 280. So it's 8 per 100,000 in Canada. It's 280 per 100,000. And that's per 100,000 births. So if you get pregnant five times instead of one time, you do here. When you run that risk, it's a, it's a game run. So that's, that's an impressive statistic, six in my mind. So we're going to measure the number of uh, uh, pregnant women seen, the number of uh, visits that they have. We're going to number, measure, just as I said, the number of skilled attendants at delivery. We're going to measure the weights of infants, follow that, for looking for malnutrition, trying to prevent that. The number of infants uh, immunized, the number of infants breastfed. Um, and a, another important aspect of it is that we will form a link between the caregivers in Guatemala, uh, the midwives, people in the community, but also their smaller hospitals, and Caregivers here in Canada, midwives, other professionals, which we're going to have exchanges and share information. And the best part of all this, I told you all this is complicated. The best part of all of this is that we didn't think of this here, here in Horizon. It wasn't our idea. So, because my experience is with Horizons, my experience is that Horizons is very good at listening. So instead of saying, "Well, you got a, you got a problem down here," but we don't. Horizons doesn't do that. Horizon says, "Tell us, tell us what's going on." So, in Guatemala, the group that we work with, Patricia was speaking about them, they said, we have a problem here. We have a problem with prenatal care and with delivery. And, and, and we say, still in Horizon, we don't say, oh, here's what you should do. <coughs> um, that's really hard to do for a family doctor not to do that. But anyway, so, uh, they, we don't say that. Horizon says, well, what do you think you should do? And then what comes is the result from the group there, the people there, and they say, well, here's what we think. So that's the best part of this whole thing. We didn't think of it. All we said is, yes, that sounds valid. Well. Let's see if we can help it. So the, the, the whole idea has come from Guatemala, not from us. And that's the most uh, uh, impressive thing. So, Because they say, basically, we know this will work. So next thing, we want to show you a quick video. So I have become uh, movie star. We are part of people's struggles to find their way out of poverty. And what we know to be true is this. It can only be achieved when communities are at the center of their own processes as they take action to improve local economies, protect the environment, and get access to health care, they also promote human rights, and particularly women's rights. And they demand a voice in society and the attention of decision makers to be active participants in shaping their country's future. Horizon of Friendship work with grassroots organization in Central America and Mexico to promote change that is locally driven, well-planned, and bring people together to talk about the problems they face 
and take a step to build a better community. In Guatemala, we work with the Association for Health, Promotion, Research and Education, or PS, as is known locally. Trabajamos en una zona donde se concentra la población indígena y donde existe mayor pobreza en el país, ya que el 97% de la población es maya y el 77% vive en pobreza. Los índices de mortalidad materna e infantil en Guatemala está entre las más altas de América Latina y más aún en esta zona donde trabajamos. La tasa es 67% más alta que el nivel nacional. Horizon is supporting a multi-year program that focuses on PS maternal child health work. Local indigenous midwives will receive training that will incorporate traditional knowledge that is at risk of disappearing. The midwives will learn from doctors in the public health system about advances in prenatal and birthing care and will further their skill at keeping patient records. State healthcare providers, university educators, and medical students will learn about indigenous cultural practices and values. Primero me formé como médico occidental en la Universidad de San Carlos de Guatemala. Fue cuando empecé a trabajar en las comunidades indígenas que aprendí a valorar la medicina tradicional indígena y reconocer el aporte y los beneficios que brinda en la atención de la salud de las familias. As a doctor, the need for access to good health care is always top of mind. And this program will mean just that to people living in remote villages in the highlands of Guatemala. What makes this program particularly inspiring is that it was designed by and is being run by an organization that is part of the communities it's helping. It has a long-standing relationship with the traditional midwives who want to learn more every day and who are determined to provide the best care possible to their patients. Another exciting component will involve Canadian and Guatemalan health care providers meeting together to share experiences and knowledge with workshops and clinic visits in both Guatemala and here in Canada. Guatemalan visitors to Canada will take part in public presentations, capacity building sessions and meetings with decision makers. And Canadians will travel to Guatemala to see firsthand the work PS is carrying out. In both the development and medical fields in particular, it's always about learning. It's always about doing things better. That's what this program is all about. Como mujer indígena y profesional de la salud, me siento satisfecha de contribuir a mejorar las condiciones de salud de las familias a través de mi trabajo en la Asociación Pies de Occidente. The Canadian government has approved 85% of the funds needed to get the work done, but we need to raise the match for this program to go ahead. Horizon needs to raise around $450,000 per year. Please, let's contribute and be part of building a better life for women and children in Guatemala. by volunteers. Yeah. All, we didn't pay a penny in putting this together. <laughs> <laughs> Volunteer work. Here. Good. I don't know how many times I've had the experience of having to follow Dr. Paul Caldwell. <laughs> <laughs> he's a master at what he does and he's an excellent presenter. Um, at any rate, my name is Bill Mavis, and you'll find out why I'm the Vice President and not the President. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, um, the year that Horizons of Friendship was formed, <clears throat> 1973, I got a degree in dentistry. And uh, my wife Shirley and I always wanted to be involved in things. So we had that opportunity in 1979, <clears throat> when we went down to the Dominican Republic after Hurricane Matura, and we saw and experienced a poverty in the third world for the first time. So as a result of that, 
the two of us have probably been involved in over 20 medical trips all over the world now. With organizations uh, like Friends of Honduran Children, uh, Medical Missions International, and Sick Children's Hospital in Toronto. But 17 years ago, I became aware of Horizons of Friendship. I discovered that they were involved in participating in projects in Central America that helped the local people with many of the problems that, well, Paul, as well as I, had observed over the time that we worked in Honduras and Belize. And as a result of that, I became a board member. I liked how Horizons, and it's been evident in this presentation, because they do not dictate solutions. They don't down to talk down to the people, but work with the people and work out solutions with their guidance. It was evident in the film that you saw. Most time, local people have a solution in mind and just need Horizons experience and financial assistance to resolve the issues. An example of this was many years ago, Patricia and I were talking, where in Central America, the ladies in the community do all the work in the fields, in the agricultural fields, and it's the same today. And they also had to look after children and infants. And Horizons was working in the area that became aware of the problem, talking to the ladies. They had already resolved the issue. And with Horizons guidance and financial assistance, along with the Rotary Club of Cobra, a daycare center was set up that these women looked after, organized, and ran. It's an idea of how Horizons work. Maternal health, child, childbirth, and infant support were always a major problem that our medical teams had to deal with. The project Horizons embarked on represents a joint effort with Horizons organizing and inter interfacing Canadian medical workers with local Guatemalan health workers. Education, supplies, and support. <clears throat> Once again, a project with Guatemala, local medical workers, collaborating and working with Canadian medical personnel, supported by Canadian supplies. A great project. The Canadian government realized this and has generously supported this endeavor. They knew that Horizon was not a new kid on the block with its 43 years of experience in Central America. They see experience, success, and sustainability. Already we have support from many private donors as well as labor unions, for example. They have looked at the organization of this project, the needs of the people, and have already supported it. But our work is not done, as was evident in the presentation. More funds must be raised. On top of this overwhelming project, though, you should be aware that Horizon has 17 other projects we support in the seven Central American countries. The work is very important to us and to those areas in Central America. These initiatives will be maintained and completed. We will be busy at Horizon, but our board of directors know, with the staff led by Patricia, to maintain, oversee these projects, and this will be completed. Although we are a small community, once again with the power and energy that's present in this room, as well as the committed donors in Northumberland County and Canada, <clears throat> success will be ours. The gap will be reduced in maternal and child care for the indigenous people of Patricia. How do you say this name? Totonica. 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 Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> Guatemala. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> now I'd like to introduce you, if you don't already know, to Patricia. No, okay. So Patricia is our executive director. She um, was born in Chile and uh, came to Canada in 1990. She has worked with uh, Horizon since then and she has been the executive director for the last 15 years. And I would suggest that you just lean back again, because she's a real spitfire. She's really powerful. Yeah. We're so impressed with her dedication, and uh, she's like a Spanish fireball. So Patricia, she's going to tell you about our partner in Guatemala. Yeah. I understand quite well the Guatemala. Guatemala have a, a war during 36 years. We have a dictatorship in Chile, too, for 17. Uh, the, the, this, the political situation in Chile was different because people were in point, different, but in Guatemala, indigenous were massacred in, in the whole village. And where this project is going to be held, is going to be carried out, is an area who was wounded by the war during 36 years and the massacre and genocide in that country. 
many of the people that you saw in that picture that we show there, they're survivors of that massacre. The midwife, people who work at PS, PS is our partner, means a food in the community. This is the, the acronym of PS. These are people who are survivors itself from those, those 36 years of war. Uh, we have uh, this partner who is a strong partner. We have supported them since 2005. We know PS in and out because we have supported several projects with them. They have around 20 staff members for the organization. Not all of them are going to work for this project. But we are going to create, through the funding from the Canadian government, around 130 positions, jobs, that doesn't exist in that community. Midwives are going to receive a stipend. Uh, people are going to have a job for the four years of that this project will last. That is a huge thing in a country where the health system is almost in bankruptcy. And you can Google that because it's, 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 it's in the open air. Um, most of the people who work in the in Totonicapani, that area that we have visited, we have have articles about their work, haven't have received a, a salary. Doctors, uh, uh, the midwife, etc., and the nurses for six months. The government doesn't have the money. The government mostly spend the money in the last political campaign and have forget about the the health system there. Then this is a much appreciated project in that area, and I'm so happy that the Canadian government have awarded us this, this, uh, this grant to, to work there. The, the two people who are going to be in charge of the project there are two indigenous women, Dr. Aura Piski, you saw her there, and the other, the coordinator, is an indigenous also, both speak Kiche. Uh, and uh, her name is Dr. Iris Champet. We work with her in putting together the, the proposal. In, in our office, we will have three people in charge of the, of the project, who is uh, Rene, the program manager, Sergio, the, the financial officer, who look after the finances of the project, a new staff that we are going to hire through this program, the community outreach, and a portion of my, of my time. Horizon also uh, did mention it. This is one project, it's a big one, but it's one out of 17 that we have. The other 16 partners don't receive any funding from the government because it was cut the, 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 the way that the International Development Finance it was cut years ago during the federal government. And we have to raise the fund also to support the other uh, initiatives that we have. And we keep very much in, in mind and in our heart that we need to support the other brothers and sisters that depend very much on, on what we, we can do for them in terms of financial assistance. Um, this is not more or less what I wanted to say about, uh, say about the project, but I think it's, a, it's an incredible project. It's a, it's a challenge for us, uh, but it's a good challenge. And uh, we are happy again to put the name of Canada, our province, and our community, Coburg, Port Hope, Northumberland, on the international arena. This is a much needed thing because Canada didn't have much of to say for many years in Central America and Mexico. Besides the mining industry who is not doing any good to the community. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs>
a country that faces some, some of the highest maternal mortality rates as we've heard in the Western Hemisphere. These funds, which represent over $11.4 million commitment by our government through Global Affairs Canada, along with over $1.8 million contribution by Horizons of Friendship, and I know that Patricia will be reminding you again. <laughs> <laughs> because the, this will begin to change lives of countless numbers of women. Mm -hmm. Their partners, newborns, children, their extended families, and frankly, their communities and their country. I know Minister Dion has put a priority on making sure Canada is there to support our developing partners around the world. Over 1,000 midwives, as we've heard, will receive comprehensive training, something that Paul knows a lot more about than I certainly do. And, and the thing that Paul didn't mention I thought was very interesting and encouraging about this project is also going to include essential vitamins, nutritional supplements, and medicines will be provided, creating an all an all-inclusive model of maternal health that I predict will be a model going forward, not just for not just for Central America, but for other countries who need this. We know globally we face a crisis in maternal health care, and this we hope will just be the beginning of addressing that crisis. This program project will touch the lives of almost a quarter of a million individuals. It's, it's a phenomenal number. I want to take the opportunity to uh, thank Horizons of Friendship, its board of directors and staff for this, the dedication to bringing this uh, globally beneficial project uh, to our attention and to Guatemala. And I, I'll go back to what I originally said and to personally thank Patricia for her work. Uh, she is, I've not heard that expression before, spitfire, but <laughs> certainly a very determined person who has been at the heart of so many of Horizon's successes. And a personal note today, another personal note, uh, apparently there's a lot of them uh, for me, uh, maybe because I've lived in this community for almost 40 years. I can't help but think today about um, one of Horizon's founders, and uh, the last female MP for Northumberland, and former Minister of the Environment, Christine Stewart. I know she'd be so proud of the 43-year legacy um, of this organization, and frankly, which culminates today in the largest grant in its history. This is the largest grant to, uh, to Horizons of Friendship, which truly is fitting, because as I said earlier, today, I believe history is being made. And you're all part of that. So thank you very much for all you Thank you for that and for extra being there in Ottawa for us. <laughs> so, and then Mr. Yeah, that's good. And Mr. Rinaldi, who's all been a supporter of Horizons for ever and ever. Right? So well, I'm, I'm glad to be here. One, uh, more, most important, because I'm behind the podium where you can see me. <laughs> you only have to ask for a sound check if you could hear me because you can't see so I don't have to do that today. Uh, but uh, where do I start? I mean, a lot of it's been said today. You know, I've been saying for years that uh, we're all children of the world, regardless of where we come from. I'm, I'm an immigrant. I'm proud to be a Canadian with my, uh, with my roots uh, where I was born and uh, raised for 12 years. But you know, sometimes we tend to look in our front yard and we forget about our backyard. And what uh, Horizon has done uh, in a number of years that I've known you a little bit, uh, because I'm not that old, but, uh, <laughs> but the lives you touched outside, outside of Canada, I think it makes us, at least it makes me, I can't speak to you yet, but it makes us Canadians feel real good. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, there is need out, out there. And I know, and Kim could probably attest, and so can Gail, holding offices like we do at different level of government, we sometimes get criticized about, you know, what about us at home? And, but, you know, as bad as things are here at home, I tell you, uh, we're, we're, we're very, we should be very, very happy to appreciate what we have. And sometimes we don't celebrate that enough. So I just want to take the opportunity, not just for being successful in this great, great venture. I know it's more work for you, but you'll be helping a lot more people. But to personally thank, uh, first of all, the board, uh, Dr. Paul and Dr. Bill, 
I see your, your commitment because you wouldn't have been here in Oklahoma if you didn't feel the commitment. And to Patricia and, and our staff. And to the staff, I, I can, although I don't know all of you and exactly what you do every day, but I know it's not just a job. I come in 9 to 5. It's a commitment and uh, we can't thank you enough. So keep up the good work. Do more. <laughs> the world really needs us. And as Canadians, we should be proud to help. So thank you very much for inviting me today. And he's right, of course, isn't it, Dave? Canadians are very kind people. And we're kind and we're caring and we're generous. Right? Even though we're not perfect here, Still, we see that there we are generous yeah, we'll enough work. to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Gill. Well, thank you very much, Paul, because it is a, for me, it is also a great pleasure for me to be here to take part in this celebration with you. Uh, it's also an opportunity uh, for me to, uh, as mayor, uh, address an international organization right here in Cobra. Mm -hmm. And uh, I use that as bragging rights when I have my conferences with my colleagues. You know, how many of you have done that? <laughs> Uh, but because I attend you know, the AGM every year, um, I do keep abreast of what's going on with uh, Horizons. And uh, I, I can tell you that I know over the last 43 years, Horizons has impacted, changed the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. And you know, so that, that's, a, that's really significant. Um, even in, you know, if you take a look at uh, Guatemala in the last five years, so you've directly, you know, you've impacted, directly impacted, 5,000 people in the last five years, and uh, indirectly 132,000 people in the last five years. Well, this announcement today of 13.2 million, I'm going to tell you it's a game changer because it's going to increase those numbers by tenfold, no more than tenfold, and that's really, really significant. You know, and I think that the grant that has come forward to Horizons is 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 you know is is justified by the work that you've done for the last 43 years. So how could they not reward you and take use your expertise to extend it even further? And you know, if part of that process is the public engagement process. It's going to have 700, you know, practitioners and, and, and uh, stakeholders involved. And I really like the uh, I like the the reference that uh, Dr. Paul Caldwell made to the training aspect of it. Because when you talk about training the trainer, that's how you really develop something that's stable and solid. So when you train the trainer, you basically start with one person, but it's like the roots of a tree. It spreads out its tentacles until it covers a whole, a huge, a huge area bigger than the tree itself. And when you get that kind of uh, training in place, it, and, it, and it's there permanently, you're now affecting the lives, or indirectly improving the lives, of hundreds of thousands of people. So again, uh, I just want to say for Horizons, uh, I think you know the work that you've done is absolutely fantastic, and that goes, you know, uh, a lot of credit goes to Patricia. I, by the way, Patricia, that's the shortest speech I've ever heard you say. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it was great to. The energy for the reporting. <laughs> <laughs> but it was right to the point. That's the important thing. And of course, all the, the board and the, and, and the staff, uh, you know, you're, you all deserve a lot of credit for what, you know, the, the difference you're making in lives and all the people in Mesopotamia. So I do thank you for that and keep up the good work. It open for questions. As I said before, it's a complicated project, but um, if there are any questions that uh, people have, just to make it clear, um, the, the, the funding for this project comes from two sources. One is from Global Affairs Canada, federal government, but there is a, a funding component that Horizons has to uh, raise, and that funding component is about $450,000 a year for four years, so it's, it's uh, substantial. Of course, the total project is uh, 13 by 2 million, so uh, we'll, we'll be knocking on a few doors here. Mm -hmm. if but, uh, so if anybody has any questions, uh, Bill or uh, Patricia, uh, I would uh, answer them. I just wanted to mention the, generos the generosity of the Elementary Teacher Federation. We have David here, and we have Josephine from Unifor, from the union, is the amalgamation of CAW and CEP who have been with us all along for many years, and they are making a contribution also toward this, this project. 
David just put your hand up. Yeah. Josephine. In Josephine? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. I said to David, thank goodness that the unions are very interested in social justice. We yeah. really appreciate that. So, so are, are there any questions that we you have for us? Or any other comments? Anybody have any comments? Or? Well, I do have one. I wanted to invite you to come with us. <laughs> I, I said it here, the product. Uh, we, every year we have a, our educational tour to Central America and Mexico. Next year in February is Guatemala. And you are going to see firsthand the impact of Global Affairs Canada, the Canadian contribution into this project, and I challenge you to come with me. We are going to be too. <laughs> but it will be a great trip educationally. The government has changed recently in Guatemala. Has that been an improvement, as far as you know? Not as far as I know, and not as far as the partner can register. <laughs> so far, no. No change. No, no, no. There is no much change. Um, the new president is um, Jimmy. I don't remember the last name, but Jimmy something. He was formerly a comedian, and he has roots with the with the with the military who have the coup d'etat for uh, and manage the country for 36 years. The country really is, they have no money. That, that is the problem. And they spend most of the money in the campaign, the political campaign. We have found through our partner that the, the, the health system is almost in shambles. They didn't know they have a deficit, uh, a weekly deficit of almost a million dollars. Even like two months ago when we were putting together the project, the company who sell medicine to the health ministry in Guatemala didn't want it to sell anymore because they haven't been paid for months. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this, the situation there is pretty pre precarious. Mm -hmm. Kathy? I have a question. I think I I've seen a little bit um, of the documents and there was some references to the Canadian First Nations and how they would be impacted through this. I wonder if you could address that. Or yeah, I, the, uh, this project have a unique component who is the public education. I don't know if you remember years ago through different governments in Canada, all the community outreach and public education was cut in this country. There is several centers who closed the door years ago. The, the, that co that those cut back started in 1997, 98. Uh, but the, with this call for proposal who came in October 2014, uh, we were able to put a, a public engagement component and is the changes. Because the population that we are going to work in Guatemala is 90% Mayan indigenous Quiche in that area, we wanted also to engage the, the First Nations here to for the changes. Uh, it had to be medical practitioners, midwife who work in reserve here or in the indigenous uh, groups. We wanted to do that. We, it, it hasn't been easy for Horizon to engage indigenous community here. Maybe some of you have direct links and can give us the link to us, but we wanted to do that because they the health system here maybe have something to learn from a, 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 a being a, a careful with people who have immigrants or indigenous for nature. <laughs> uh, the, the, the cultural appropriate part is something that PS, our partner in the South, know how to do it quite well. And it's, it's not a top-down thing. It's not that the Canadian doctors are going to teach something. There is it's an exchange. There is a lot to learn from what they do there without any machine and anything, they, just by looking and asking questions to the people. But we wanted to engage in the indigenous community, First Nation in Canada, going there and exchanging knowledge. And we ask for your help to help us to do that, because <laughs> maybe the teacher federation or other federation, but it had to be like health practitioners. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, OPSU is also supporting this project, and OPSU uh, also have members who are part of the, the, the hospital. When we went to Guatemala this year in February, we took four people from OPSU, two of them, rank and five members from the uh, Toronto East Hospital, 
who were there like in a mission to, to observe the project. We didn't know if the project was, was going to be uh, approved or not, but we have this engagement with the Toronto East Hospital in Optimate. Any other questions or comments or? Thank you for coming. Thank you for your support.